Hello, welcome back, Alexandrian Codex. Life is strange too. Where? We're gonna keep playing. Steven! Daniel! Anybody home? Daniel! We're gonna keep playing chapter two until we're done with it. I don't know one's home, so uh well, Looks like I'm home alone. That was as good a time as any to poke around where I'm not supposed to. Just like any good teenager. Y'all got any right. drugs in here? Sunday morning. Oh, yeah, Stephen must be at church. They're praising the Lord. Hallelujah. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We had a good time decorating the tree together last night. Daniel loved it. On the second day of fishness, the fish revealed itself. Show me the fish. I want the oh. fish. Maybe the fish is gone now. Well, they're away. Sean, no, 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 no. <laughs> we are not calling Lila. Uh, I am sure her phone is tapped. I am positive, absolutely positive, that her phone is tapped. Now, getting online, if we go through a proxy ask? server, then we, we could probably get away with some shit. But, time to look up porn. Jeez. Steven went search crazy on us. Seattle blasts and shooting, an unresolved mystery. Officer Tanaka holds press conference at Seattle Incident. P.S. SPD is considering every lead, including terror attack and gang fight. More questions and answers in Seattle Incident. Friends and neighbors mourn the loss of local mechanic. These articles are almost a month old. Where the Diaz brothers? I blacked out, says main witness of the Seattle blast after leaving hospital. Seattle protests SPD to hold awareness workshops on racial bias. Fuck, this is too real. To do anything worthwhile, nah, let's just hold a workshop on racial bias where HR will come in and be like, hey kids, so uh, don't shoot brown people. All right, great, everybody understand, wonderful. All right, now we're gonna break up into groups and we're gonna do some group projects to God. A man died and all you have are fucking workshops. I had no idea Steven could fall for this bullshit conspiracy theories excuse you this is reddit <laughs> i know reddit when i see it and as if he's on here i'm sure he's on some more interesting subreddits let's put it that way uh go to fake explosion url for the story covering this cover up the new power plant they want to build in the city is definitely part of this we don't even have power plants in the city we we do hydroelectric power for the most part looks like they formed the porn formed formed mm, no that, that's dangerous frame the poor kids too I saw surveillance footage and no way that was a natural explosion what's going on in seattle maybe prepping for a false flag operation read that a motel owner saw the kids and the kids blew up his toilet not accurate, but okay. Brothers at the gas station, everything's a conspiracy to U.S. wanker. My friend's parents work for Oregon PD, and they say there's a secret manhunt for the two brothers. Heard they might have been used for experiments, but they're now on the run because the experiments worked and made them dangerous. Now there are experiments going on everywhere because I came from an experiment. Is that what your parents call dating? Check Brody's blog. Yeah! Well, Brody, if we ever make it home, wherever that is, you'll be much, much welcome. This dispatch from the road is a tribute to a couple of new young friends I made on a recent adventure I've yet to transcribe or even fully process yet. I'll leave the details vague to protect the innocent because, believe me, they are not guilty, but let me digress. The best part about being a professional traveler, I meaning I sometimes make gas money off these dispatches, is the people you meet on the proverbial road. Of course, the worst part is being a professional traveler is the people you meet on the actual road. Been too lucky for a variety of reasons, though 
Had moments of pants shitting fear from a uh, highway patrol hiding, following me at night. That weird motherfucker I picked up in Iowa who wouldn't leave the car. Read that awful account here. Ultimately, I approach strangers as potential friends, not allies. I'm that naive and stupid that the universe feels sorry for me and lets me skate on by as I help people on instinct rather than objectively. First thought, best thought. I still hear my ex-brother, his choice, telling me years ago, you read all this cr Kerouac, yeah, okay, Kerouac crap about life on the road, but you can't even change a tire, asshole. He was right, so I learned how to change a tire. Not good at it. I also have towing insurance. And a dilemma. However, I can't always give my version of roadside assistance, including to my young compañeros who needed it the most. Yeah, Brody was really great, wasn't he? I wish I could have done more for them, maybe even joined their quest, because a more important journey than mine. Instead of just pushing a rock up a hill, I could have helped them move mountains out of the way. If we were hanging out again, I'd ask you to forgive me for not coming along to offer whatever help I could. Then again, <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of a clumsy dork, and I could have fucked up shit by playing, trying to play savior. That paralysis of analysis. My life. My suspicion that they didn't really need me in the end, just each other. So I'll continue to weave this highway and roadside tapestry, always paying it forward. Call guilt if you want. I'm still that geeky, sincere kid who moved up to anybody, who looked up to anybody who wanted to change the world for good, who wanted to move mountains for others. I always wanted to be a cardboard Lois Lane, a roaming reporter, get in the face of this corrupt matrix. Sure, my adult cynic knows the system's rigged, we're screwed, and justice system is just a joke, but, but when I saw the faces of my wandering friends who went through hell, they're still there for all I know, smiling with childlike gratitude and most trivial gifts, I felt ashamed. Sad. There are times when I encounter a little lost soul and they flash that wide-eyed, grateful, frightened stare, you feel your heart break into a million pieces. Now I think of all those children out there alone at night, on the precipice, on the razor's edge of America and beyond, wanting only the most basic of life's needs, like food and parents. Makes me cry and sick once. <laughs> and I rage, rage at the dying light, and vow to do my part. Well, that's the benefit of being an activist on wheels. I like to think of myself as moving forward, like like a friendly shark. Otherwise, we don't eat, we don't survive. Now I find myself thinking of the past, wondering if I gave the best advice to those in need, if I even helped those lost children of the American night by leaving them on their own. Then I realize I'm the one who's actually lost out here. My friends climbing the hills know exactly where they're going. And I know you're going to make it home. I like the point of visit. Prody makes everything interesting. <laughs> Even the weirdest stuff. The sky is an almost perfect blue cliche as I pull my weary gas beast off the winding Highway 5 into the tiny main vein of Rockville Springs, Wyoming. Its community height, population 472. This is a stark, barren land before time, like any other sleepy town born before the local mine shafts that fed the com community, <laughs> along with the robber barons who owned the oil. The, the citizens suffered their fair share of tragedy over the decades, but, but managed to retain a healthy main street with a few thriving shops and services. By the end of the oil-starved 70s, the once sleepy town was in a coma. After the last drops of precious earth blood had been mined, company quietly closed shop of the town, the populace to their own devices, which meant most people packed up, closed shop, left forever. What brings me today to Rockville Springs, Wyoming, population 51. The ghosts who stayed behind to haunt what was left of the town are now stark naked. It was always an eccentric, lynching aura over Rock Springs is uh, demonstrated by their very own nudist community been quietly amassing ever since the 1950s after the first local oil gushed from the earth. The town wasn't as religious or conservative as others in that repressive era, so the town thought of nude volleyball 
didn't even cause a legal scandal. How could it when the city's own mayor was seen or unseen bathing in his birthday suit? So nobody there gave a rat's ass, even though they could see everybody's ass. <laughs> when the majority of the town was abandoned to the nudist community, well, they saw this as a chance to pursue their end goal of their lifelong dream. Naked, public sphere, free of moral judgment. Back in the future, uh, 2016, the leftover, forgotten, unclothed residents of Rockville Springs have come under some misguided public and political attacks for their all-natural lifestyle. Think the smug media reports, curious visitors now drive through the depleted Main Street not to get a cup of the damn fine... Pie? And coffee? Well, that's weird phrasing, Brody. At Raw Cafe. Tell him Brody sent you. But giggle and take selfies with the new townspeople as their background props. It's rather gross to witness, as I did in my brief drive through report. Yet there's no doubt some members of the town welcome the tourists because they spend money. It's that old expression. No such thing as bad publicity. Ironically, I'd only heard about Rockville Springs in my travels and vowed to stop there someday. If only to satisfy my need to see a 56-year-old naked man change the oil in my car. Then I had a boring epiphany. How do you talk to a naked person? Found out you just... talk. You don't forget that they're not wearing clothes, but you actually end up becoming embarrassed that you are. The people I saw and chatted up didn't have any particularly unique insights in the world or geopolitics. This mechanic told me, I gave them taxes. Don't ask me to vote for the bastards, too. Ironically, some tended to be quite conservative. They just wanted to not pay taxes without clothes. Others seemed to stay out of sight with the crowds around, which makes the recent media circus more insulting, since the tone of the report is always a condescending, ooh, look at the funny people with sagging flesh, cooking eggs, and jogging down the road. As a full disclosure, I admit, former Brody would have not would have maybe been one of the same judgmental assholes. Now I'm glad I'm not him anymore. Okay, take a breath, my dude. I'm not saying this mild condemnation is a great threat to liberty. We obviously have worse going on in this big country, but it's always a revealing microcosm of how we treat each other and all of our naked hypocrisy. God damn, Brody. God damn. Jeez. Stephen went search crazy on us. Uh, no, we've read this. Look at this. Log in? Nope. Nope. Back away. Back away. Back away. We are not logging in. Alex is good enough at InfoSec to know not to do that. I like reading. <laughs> I really like uh, heavy narrative text games. Games with a lot of narrative text. Because... God, it makes streaming so much easier. The filler is so much easier. Well, I guess they won't be back for at least two hours. Morning, sleepy heads. We let you sleep in today. While we're at church. Back by noon for lunch. See you in a bit. Love, Grandma and Grandpa. P.S. The Christmas tree is perfect. Great job, kids. P.S.S. Thank you for tidying up a bit. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You thank me. I tidied. Daniel did it. I'm the good child. Okay. Let's get this back back home now. I thought he said backpack at first. I'm like, what backpack? We're not missing a backpack. Bye, Daniel. I'm sure we'll get to the point where it's scripted to go into the room. All right, Gotta fine. Daniel home before he does something stupid. Oh, uh, you know, that's a good point, Sean. But what if we just took the scenic route instead? Hmm. Mighty fine wood you have there. All right, continuing around here. Merry Christmas. Steven and Claire are going to freak if they realize he went to the Ericsons. Oh, okay. No, you got music of your own. I guess I'm done whistling then. Single dad family. Way too close to home. 
Oh god. Yo man, you got any choco bars? Got any of them choco bars? In relation to the house, this lake is higher. That is not good. You probably get a lot of water damage. Poor guy. Why do you pull a face like that? Daniel! Oh, I can't do it. Okay. Just creeping. I'm gonna kill him. What's going on here? Sean! Wait! Don't freak out! I can't explain! Let me tell him. Sean, I know it sounds crazy, but I have a superpower. Daniel! I know you did. I was flying. <sighs> things. Objects. With my mind. Oh. Terry was right. Superpower. Really? Yes. Great. And you don't realize what that implies? Everyone can see you from the outside. You could get in real trouble. This is dangerous. Do you understand? Yes. No fucking fun allowed. I promise to be careful. This is just our secret, okay? Nobody can find out I'm the real Captain Spirit. And nobody will. Ever. Now you're an official member of the Spirit Squad. I don't want to be a you member of the Spirit us? Squad. I'll disintegrate you. Oh god, can we get out of here? <laughs> nah, just kidding. Please. Oh yeah, we need a... I don't want to be here. Team Signal. Oh my Team. god. I'm gonna be... Super Wolf. Oh Christ. Kill me. What's your super name, Sean? Don't want to be here! What the Awo will go? I don't know. Something cool like El Diezblo Loco. Diezblo? Mm, sounds like a super villain's name. You wanna go, kid? But, okay. Okay, guys, I think we're ready to roll. He was in the bathroom? Uh, excuse me. Who are you? I'm Sean. Uh, oh, We've yeah. met! Sorry, man. Dick? Sorry for Daniel. Hey, let's make it official. I'm Charles Erickson. Nice to meet you. Hope you know that Daniel and Chris are a dangerous team. Oh we better watch out, or they're gonna take over the world. Uh, yeah. They share a lot of You're a good dad, but I don't want to be here, man. Can we go get the Christmas tree now? We're both ready to fly. Yes. No, Daniel yes. can't go. The, the team has been waiting too oh long. Oh my god. There's nothing going on over here. Yes! No! Wait to see all the decorations. No! Well, Sean. We could buy Christmas presents for Grandma and Grandpa. With whose money? They'll worry. Well, they'll worry if we leave the house. And remember, you still have to get better, Daniel. Sean, come on. No. No, I haven't done anything fun since I got sick. Too fucking bad, kid. The first time I've been out for days. I hear you. you. Won't be gone for long. The market's only a few miles away. Back off, man. Maybe they'll be at the service for at least another hour. Uh. I can show Daniel around. You can come with us. No. Please say no. yes. No. Please. No. Please. No. Please. No. Please. No. Okay. No. 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 Uh. No. Not a fair fight. So let's go. <laughs> but thou <laughs> must. Yeah. Uh. See. Fuck you. Dangerous. Fuck all of you. Okay, team. Uh, give me a time out to clean up the back seat. I'll honk when I'm done. Ooh. Uh. Excuse can you. Can I use the bathroom? Of course. Oh, you'll see my comic books. I'm glad you're coming too. Ugh. Hey, you want to see my toys? No. Oh. God, I. I'm. You new hot dog man. Since you're a new Ugh. member of the team. You have to know everybody. No. These are Captain Spirit's friends. 
Oh. Enemies. Dude, oh. That's pretty cool. Can you guess who are the good guys and the villains? Shit. Let's see. Fuck. All right, Dino is a hero. Bear, hero. Insectoids, Look villains, closely. you fucking xenophobe. Warrior, villain. Car. Careful. You know. Maybe tricky. Chris, how about you fuck off? The pirate is, I don't know, uh, the car, dude, say hero. It's like clearly not, the but. The bad guys, the good guys. The quiet yeah, guys. Maybe, right? Pirate's a hero. Okay. Car's a villain. Go. Okay. How did I do? Not bad. You're almost right. It was a bit tricky. Okay, let me introduce them to you. This is Team Spirit, the good guys. There's the Forest Warrior, Power Bear, <laughs> Marty Rex, and Sky Pirate. Marty Rex? Who are the bad guys? That's Noctarius and the Shark Stinger. There's also Snowmancer, but he's out in the garden. But they're all working for Mantroid, who's the real supervillain. So, where is he? Hiding out on his evil planet, waiting for me. <laughs> it's me! I'm the Mantroid! Make sure he doesn't hurt anyone. <laughs> yeah, strength in numbers. Sounds like Mantroid is in trouble. Just wait until he sees what Captain Spirit can do now. Oh no. Yeah. About that. Um, does your dad know about any of this? Did he see something yesterday? No, he didn't see anything. Hmm. The power didn't work yesterday. Fuck. After I fell. Uh, must have been too tired. Okay, good. Um, I mean, he could be pretty disturbed if he knew. I'm definitely not telling Dad. I don't want to freak him out. He's worried about other stuff anyway. Cool treehouse! Well, your dad is cool. He totally hooked you up with that treehouse. Cool. Yeah, he let Steven build it for me. Alright, I might get a haircut a today. Fortress. Fuck. I bet. There's no stopping. Yeah, right. This kid is not. Well, this is not going well. Help him, of course. So okay, all right. Um, hair opinions. What the fuck should I do? So I'm getting the sides shaved down. This is getting an undercut again, so the fluff is staying. I'm torn between um, adding some blue. Which, I don't know. Might look okay with the brown. It, or I'm gonna have to darken it and go with like blue and black or something like that But that's a little more edgy than I want to go to or I might just leave. I don't fucking know, but um, my <laughs> My 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 friend at the barbershop is like here's my hours. I'm there right now I'm, like, ah! <laughs> I'm busy <laughs> Uh, Let's fix it well, The flying forges needs fixing now. Yeah, that sucks Dad couldn't fix it yesterday. He was not feeling well. Does your dad have a drug problem? Maybe he'll do it when we're back from the market. Cool, cool That's kid, cool. cool, cool. Sorry, the water eater is still broken. The what? There's the signal. Come on, Daniel. Hey, pro tip: don't go in there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, squad. Let's roll. So I was, I was thinking about going halvesies on the blue, but really, if I do blue, I should just do the whole fucking thing because it, they're so, they're not a lot up here. Thanks. Not enough to do half and half. Okay. Yeah. This is illegal. Don't mess around. This is illegal. This is technically illegal. I did this a lot as a kid in Kentucky. Technically illegal. You should not have kids in the back of your truck without seatbelts. That's a great way to lose kids. Uh, 
Well, it's fun, Alex. Not, not really, man. It's a little fun, but also it's, like, terrifying. Fun is not good parenting. It's okay for adults to do it because you know you're breaking the law, but to, I, I don't know, I don't know. I did it a lot as a kid. Nobody ever got hurt, but it always just seemed kind of... sketch. At the same time, we used to load like six or eight goddamn grandkids in the back of a truck at a time. <laughs> one would be in the passenger seat, one would be in the hump, and then like six or eight of them in the back. Uh, here we have in Justin, me, my sister, uh, Sarah, Andrea, Connor, are the other ones born yet? Okay, yeah, like buddy. eight. Eight of us. Yeah. <laughs> hey! You guys go ahead and we'll come back to meet you, okay? Brothers meeting. Sure. But Don't get lost. You little shit. <laughs> Dude. What the fuck? <laughs> How many times do we have to keep going over the rules? Don't show the power. <laughs> I know. But Chris thinks he can do all this cool stuff. I wish he could. He reminds me of Noah. I just miss having friends, Sean. Protect the secret, bruh. Well, okay. It Okay, so, so, I want to say protect the secret, right, because, <sighs> obvious reason, but I think Terry's right. I think that if we lie to Chris, Chris is going to jump off of something and die. I think protecting the secret might keep us safe, but I think the consequence of protecting the secret is probably that Chris gets hurt. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. So far, it's two zero protect. But is this kid more important than our kid? Yeah, that's a philosophical question, isn't it? No, right, as far as Sean would be concerned, his brother is way, way more important. Change my- nope! Too late! Listen, I <laughs> Protect the secrets! We have to be extra careful out here. You can't let people see you. You know the rules. Yes, I know the rules. But I'm careful. I only do things when it's me and Chris. Nobody sees us. Yeah. No. That could be what phrased very differently. I only do things when it's the two of us. Or no one sees us. Or Okay, okay. Excuse you. Get it. Okay. But I'm careful. Careful. That's not enough. You have to be extra, extra careful. Alright. I swear I will. Deal. I'm counting on you, and I know. Can I go see Chris now? Yeah, let's go. But don't forget what I said. Wow. So okay. Many trees. Uh, that text we'll get back to as soon as we hit another cutscene. It's not urgent. It's not important. Why am I looking at trees? I don't care about the trees. I just want to get out of here as quickly as possible. I'm right here. I'll be around. Hey, what's up? Uh, nothing. I'll tell you later. So, what do we do? We have to pick the one we like. Can Daniel help Dad? You want to fight, old man? <laughs> Come on, no time to lose. Get any. Hi. Everything all right? All good. Quiet morning as usual. Good. Tell me if you need anything. Okay? Oh, sure. perfect. This is what I wanted. 
Well, it's been half an hour. I'm going to keep recording, but if you're watching this on YouTube, tough fucking shit. There will be more of it up again tomorrow. Till then, toodle Take care. I'll see you then. Bye-bye. Bernie Sanders 2020. I, I don't know. I don't know. I've used that one before. I'm running out of euphemisms for you should be a socialist, but you should be a socialist. I love you.